Thank you very much. Uh, so good morning to all of you. I hope you can hear me uh, loud and clear. Uh, I just came back from another uh, lengthy mission in, um, in Gaza uh, from uh, the, the 7th to the 23rd of uh, April. And I want to say something about that, but I want to start, of course, with I think all of us are most concerned about uh, is uh, a potential or an imminent a uh, full-scale operation, a military operation in Rafa. And I want to explain very much from the health side, from the health pers uh, perspective, why WHO and partners are so concerned about that. Well, of course, the, 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 the 1.2 million, 1.5 million people cramped in Rafa, and, and any operation will result in an additional humanitarian disaster uh, on top of what it already uh, is. Uh, we as WHO, and, and, and also when I was in, in, in Gaza and visiting all those hospitals and places, both in the south and the north, I will get back to that later, uh, with partners and with the hospital staff, we are of course making contingency plan to, to help ensure that the health system is as good as possible prepared and, and, and can continue to provide care, some care. But I want to uh, really point out why, why this is so complex? In Rafa, there are three functional hospitals at the moment, small hospitals. There's Al Najjar, there's Emirati, which is an, an MCH hospital, a more and child hospital, and Kuwaiti, which is a very small hospital. Now, every time when we have seen when there's a mil military incursion, if it is in the north, Gaza City, or Khan Yunus, these hospitals very quickly become not reachable. Staff cannot go, patients cannot come and go, etc. So they be, they become from partly functional, very quickly non-functional. In worst cases, what we have seen in the north and in, in, in Khan Yunus, etc., hospitals get damaged or even partly destroyed. Another problem is that uh, because the, the escalation will come from the east to the west, that patients cannot be reversed anymore cannot be referred anymore to, uh, to uh, the European Gaza Hospital, which is the referral hospital for, for the for current patients. That road will be blocked and that hospital will be kind of isolated. So then we only have a few field hospitals along Rafa Mawasi and there's plans to get a field hospital in Darabala. Uh, and that's it. So what's uh, was uh, the health workers from National Medical Complex, which was the most important hospital actually in, in South of Bali Gaza, uh, most important hospital next to Shipa in the past with all. And it became, as we all know, it became non-functional after the last siege in February. Uh, so the hospital director, health workers, WHO and partners, and I want to mention specifically that MSF, UK Met and MAF UK. So they, they've been clearing and cleaning this hospital and restoring it for some functions, the emergency ward, the maternity ward, and the, 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 the neonatal uh, ICUs, some ICUs, operation theaters and OPD. So to have a referral place, because Nasser Medical Complex and Al-Aqsa Hospital in the middle area will be only two, be two places as a, a referral potential. Um, I want to really say that this is, this contingency plan is band-aid. It will absolutely not prevent the expected substantial additional mortality and morbidity caused by a military op operation. Also, of course, a military operation will lead to a new wave of displacement, more overcrowding, less access to uh, essential food, water, sanitation, etc. And definitely more outbreaks, uh, uh, what we already have, including, of course, an, 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 a security situation, which is already very volatile, uh, which will, uh, well, will, will worsen. So there's plans also to have an additional field hospital uh, set up. As WHO, we also shifted that for ourselves directly. We have, as you might remember, we, we quickly set up warehouses from the start of this crisis in the south, in Khan Yunus. Those warehouses are destroyed. Then we set up quickly warehouses in Rafa. Three, now we set up a huge warehouse in Darabella and we're shifting supplies there as well to spread the risk. We don't want to 
make those plans. I want to make it very clear. We don't want to make these plans. We all, of course, hope and expect that this military incursion will not happen and that we will move towards a sustained uh, ceasefire. I just want to add one other point on, on, on health systems, health services. In the north, there's an expansion of services, uh, which the WHO and partners uh, support in Al Ahli, in Kamal Adwan, Al Ada. We try to look, is anything possible as well from Shifa, um, uh, but also expansion of primary healthcare. Uh, Patient friendly hospital with support of IMC. They are actually currently already uh, trying to renovate, rehabilitate some of that and get pediatric services and primary, more primary healthcare services and medical points. One small point I want to ask. So when I was there over two years, we did many missions to the north. It's always the same pattern what we do. We bring in medical supplies, fuel. Now we also bring in emergency medical teams. We bring them in or we get them out and we take patients out when it is needed, etc. We did a couple, uh, uh, quite a few of those uh, missions. And at one point I want to say, the confliction uh, improved a little bit, but we still have massive issues. We often have delays, so we are prepared with this whole group, the missions, trucks that have fuel truck, medical supply truck, already 4.30 in the morning. 6.30, everybody is ready to go. Often they get delayed, 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 and we can only leave at one or two in the afternoon. That means we cannot take the, the fuel truck with us and the medical supply truck. And we can only, for example, get the, the, the emergency medical team in and, and the patients out. So sometimes we, we, what we could do in one mission, we have to do in four. It's incredibly labor intensive and also incredibly costly, and which, and of course, is shifting us from other priorities, what we have. A small point also malnutrition. When I saw the North compared to when I was there in February and, and, and in, and in uh, December on long missions. So the, the food situation has a little bit uh, improved. There's a bit more food, there's more diverse food, etc. People tell us this as well. However, I want to make the point when I was in Kamal at one and then bringing this medication and getting people out. So the, the, the director, Dr. Sam, the pediatrician, showed me around this uh, therapeutic feeding units supported by WHO and, and UNICEF. And he showed me a couple of kids of two years, which were four kgs. Well, children from two years, kids from two years, they should be between 10 and 14 kgs. And then, so they were severely malnourished. He told me that he had seen hundreds of this type of kids. And he, he said, I asked him over the last weeks, he saw a little bit, it's all going down. But of course the effects this has had for hundreds of children, we don't even know how how how, how many. That will the effects will be then for potentially a lifetime, and 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 also, Gaza health workers were never used to actually treat malnutrition, etc. Because there was was no malnutrition in in Gaza. Last point, opening of areas. I think that's good news. The more uh, openings there are, uh, it is mainly for food. We, we hope to also in future get through our stop port and ARS. Uh, we're planning to also get medical supplies uh, through that. Uh, we are also actually raising the bar. What we of course really would like to see that we go back in the near future, that we will be allowed again to do local procurements, both in Israel and West Bank. And there will be entry of uh, UN and humanitarians uh, through Carrier Shalom or Harris. That would really, I think, facilitate uh, the humanitarian support also uh, considerably. I think that's all from my side on, on, on there. Maybe Ahmed, wants, you want to add something from your point uh, as Ahmed is our the WHO team leader and, and incident manager.